So, let us continue with the isometric views. So, last time we did some math ok. So, what we had was a unit cube and uh, let me take a block in my hand what we had was a unit cube ok. So, this was the x axis of this this was the y axis pointing towards me z axis ok and what we did was we rotated this unit cube about the z axis by an angle alpha and then we rotated this cube about this horizontal axis by an angle beta right. So, when we did transformations we rotate the object of the unit cube about the z axis then about the x axis and then we perform the projection on the vertical plane that is the screen plane ok. When we did the transformations we pre multiplied the rotation matrix about the x axis with r z and then we pre multiplied the projection matrix and we got the new coordinates or the projected coordinates of the points p q and r ok. So, this is point p q which is pointing inside the uh, inside the screen and r over here ok. We computed the lengths o p o q and o r ok. We equated them o p equals o q o equals o r we did some algebra and we eventually got our solution beta to be equal to plus minus 35.26 degrees and alpha to be equal to plus minus 45 degrees ok. So, if we plug in let us say the positive values alpha equals 45 and beta equals 35 degrees 35.26 degrees over here in our transformation matrix we get g equals 1 over root 2 0 1 over root 6 minus 1 over root 2 0 1 over root 6 and 0 0 root 2 over root 3. And last time we figured that the foreshortening the unit lengths o p o q pointing inside and o r they all got foreshortened by a factor root 2 over root 3 ok right. So, this is the x coordinate of point p on the projected x z plane your screen plane the z coordinate ok likewise the x coordinate of point q the z coordinate x coordinate of point r and z coordinate ok. So, we figured we figured that o p ok o p would lie along the x axis which is at 30 degrees to the horizontal. Likewise o q which is pointing inside would lie along o y which is at 30 degrees from the horizontal again on the other side and o r which is vertical will remain vertical here ok. Let us say this is the unit cube ok 45 degrees 35.26 degrees ok all right. How will the bottom plane of this cube show up? How will the bottom plane of this cube show up? Like so yeah how would this plane show up in the figure like so right and how would this plane show up ok parallel to this plane ok. Now, once you figure one once you identify the o x o y and o z axes of the object it is fairly straightforward for you to identify a point if I give you the coordinates. For example, if I give you the coordinates of any point as 30, 40 and 50 ok 30 for the x coordinate 40 for the y coordinate and 50 for the z coordinate how will you 
locate that point on the plane. What you would do is you would go 30 from the origin parallel to the x axis, right? Let us say you have gone here, okay? And then you would go 40 parallel to the y axis over here maybe, right? You are still on the x y plane, okay? And then to plot 50, you will stand here and go vertically upward, okay? All right? That is how you would locate your x y z coordinates as 30, 40 and 50 respectively. With me? With me? Not yet. Good. Yeah? So, Avikalp says why go 30 along this, 40 along this and 50 along this, why are we not using this foreshortening factor and he is absolutely right ok. And at this point I would like to differentiate between something called the isometric drawing and isometric view. In an isometric drawing you would be using that foreshortening factor, in an isometric view it is ok for you to use true length, the object just gets scaled by root 3 over root 2 that is all ok, the other way around. All right, so last time we were doing this example, let us uh, redo this again, at this time let me say that this is the length direction of my object, so stay with me here ok. Let me say that this is the length direction of my object. Let me say that this is the height direction of my object. And if I go to the top view, this would be what? The width. Once I identify my length, height, and width directions, it is much easier for me to draw the isometric drawing or isometric view. Okay? Let us do that. What did I say this was? Length. How about this? How about that? Width. Good. Okay, I am drawing x, y, and z the other way around now. This is my x direction, okay, which is still at 30 degrees to the horizontal, my y direction, which is still at 30 degrees to the horizontal, and z direction is vertical. Okay. Now, I am keeping my length direction along the x axis, stay with me here, I am keeping my length direction along the x axis, okay. that would mean that all features along this direction are to be drawn along this direction in the isometric drawing of you, I am keeping my width direction along the y axis, all features from here to here along that direction are to be drawn here and z I am keeping for the height, okay. So, if you look at this object, you would see that this is a fevicole joint so, if you look at this object, it is composed of two features, okay. This one is a block, a slanted block, and this one is like a tapered rib, okay. So, let me draw the bounding box for the slanted box. Origin, yeah? This is the origin. What is this length? 40, wonderful. What is this? Great. What is this? Huh? Wonderful. What are the coordinates of this point?
20, 40, 30? Great, not very difficult. That is precisely how you need to draw isometric drawing or isometric view. Okay? The bounding box for the slanted or sliced box ready. Now let me draw the bounding box for the tapered red. Okay? From here to here, the length is 60. So I'll go from here to here. 60 and then from here to here 15 15 15 okay so I'll go 60 from this point along this direction along the x direction and cell phones off please and I'll go 15 from here till here and then I'll draw a line parallel to the Y. Okay? Now let's focus on this part here. Let's focus on this. So this face of the rib is coinciding with this plane. Okay? What is this length? 10? 10? What is this distance? 15? This distance is also 15? Okay? Right? I join these two points. Likewise, I have another square here and I join these four vertices to get a block within which the tapered rib is going to be. Okay? Okay? Now notice that I'm only using the construction lines. I haven't yet begun to draw the actual solid. Right? Okay. <clears throat> there is a reason for that, and I'll tell that reason to you in a little while. Would this edge be visible? No. I don't need to draw this. Would this edge be visible? No. no, I don't need to draw this either. How about this? Right? My rib is ready. You draw the isometric drawing or the isometric view the way you see it. No hidden lines. Okay? Absolutely no hidden lines. Right? How about the sliced block behind the back or at the back of the rib? Do you see this edge? Do you see this one? You do? So you would see only, you would see that edge only partially, not completely. Yeah? Okay, and since there is a slant, I get this. Okay, since there is a slant which is very similar to this, since this plane is the same, since this plane is the same, this line will have the same direction cosines as this line. Okay? Am I done? Yes, sir. As simple as that. No rocket science. Okay? What do you say about this edge? Would you actually see this edge or no? Yes, sir. Why, do you, why do you say that? Discontinuity because the planes are different. This plane, this plane is not the same as this plane. Okay? So you would see this line. So a lot of people came to me last time and asked me, well, sir, why only this orientation? Okay, why can I not have the object placed differently? Sure, you can. So instead of showing the object like this, you can turn it around about the z-axis by 90 degrees and have this rib show along the y instead of along the z. Perfectly fine. Or you can turn it around by 180 degrees and show the rib going the other way around, along the Z, along the X. Okay? So there are multiple possibilities in which you can show the isometric drawing of you. Word of caution, no hidden lines are to be shown like we do in case of orthographic views. No hidden lines are to be shown. 
okay. We stay as realistic as possible when we show the isometric drawing of view. Okay, so when you're drawing isometric views, you need to be very, very careful. Okay, you draw a solid line only when you're absolutely sure that you will see that line. Otherwise, you don't. Okay, otherwise, you will end up using your eraser and wasting time and spoiling the sheet. Isometric views are realistic. We show what we see. Okay, unlike in case of orthographic views, where we show even those features that we don't see by means of hidden lines. Okay? Yeah? Ignore that. Huh? No, 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 no. That, that scale is different. That scale is so. Maybe what I did was I scaled the 60 to 40. Maybe that's what I did. So at this time, ignore that. <clears throat> okay. So you draw an isometric view with the help of orthographic views, right? But you don't have to strictly adhere to which is the left view, which is the right view, which is the front view, which is the top view. Those three views, those three views are to give you an idea of how the object is going to look like. Once you get the idea, once you get the idea, you can choose the orientation of the object the way you want to show as many features as possible in solid lines. For example, Had I shown this feature, tapered rib, at the back, would it have been a good idea? No, because then a major part of that rib would have been occult. Okay, major or possibly all, I don't know. Okay, would it have been a good idea for me to rotate this by 180 degrees and maybe not see this slant on the plane? No? Yeah? So you need to orient the object in such a way that you get maximum, you get to see maximum features. Okay? So when we are drawing this uh, isometric drawing, uh, then we have to take the uh, real uh, values out of point order. Isometric drawing, foreshortened. Isometric view or isometric sketch, true values. All right. Something very important. So remember in the first class or the second class and definitely in the first lab you did a lot of exercises on ellipses. We are going to be drawing a lot of elliptical arcs or ellipses in isometric views. Okay? You see that uh, unit cube on bottom left? Okay? Imagine that you have a circular feature. Imagine that you have a circular feature here. Okay? You have rotated this object twice and projected it on a vertical plane. Okay? Now let me turn this object around. You will have a circular feature here. How would that circle look? Are you sure? Are you sure? Absolutely? Positively? Definitely? Okay. I thought just in case you weren't sure, I would back myself up with a little bit of math. So this was the projection matrix, okay? Alpha equals 45, beta equals 35 minus 35.26, okay? If you have a circle on the xy plane, okay, which is the xy plane, which is the, which is the bottom plane of the cube, okay? The coordinates of a point on the circle will be a plus R cosine theta, B plus R sine theta and zero. A and B are the centers of the circle. The central coordinates of the circle are the radius. Plugging these values over here, pre-multiply this thing by this matrix, get the new coordinates. Okay, do some algebra. Eliminate theta. Okay. And then compare it with your generic equation 
for a conic, get what A is, what H is, what B is, okay, and the test is the litmus test is for an ellipse is less than okay interesting right you choose any value of a any value of b any value of r h squared minus ab will always be minus 12 in case the circle is on the bottom plane okay so a circle gets converted into an ellipse right Okay. Same thing, the circle is on the y z plane, the x direction, the y direction, the z direction, the circle is here. Okay. Ellipse, huh? do the same exercise. Okay. If it is on the y z plane, your y coordinate will be non zero, your z coordinate will be non zero, do the same exercise. Okay, and you will find that your litmus test holds. In this case, h squared minus a b is equal to minus 3, which is smaller than 0. Okay, and the same thing if the circle is on the x z plane. Okay, same thing. The interesting part is irrespective of what A is, what B is, what R is, these values remain constant. H squared minus AB, it remains constant. Okay? Let us get to a tougher problem. Shown on the screen is the third angle projection of an object. I will spare you the effort. I will tell you that the object looks like this. 10 seconds to clear your throats. Now, if you realize you can actually break this object into three parts. Okay? The part on the back, which is a resting feature, okay, a part on the right. Okay, so this is the first part, this is the second part, and this part would be the third part. Okay, you can break this object up into three parts. Okay? divide and rule that helps. You can have a bounding box corresponding to the part which is resting at the back and you can have one for this one and you can have another bounding box for this guy here. Okay? Okay? Now for us to understand, for us to understand let me explicitly mention the x, y and z axes. Okay? Now, let the x direction have all the features along this direction. Let the height direction have all the features along this direction. And let the length be drawn along the y axis. Let us get started. Let us first draw the bounding box corresponding to this guy here. What is this height? Huh? 7 0. What is this? 60. What is this? 10, once you have identified the three dimensions of a box or of a block, you can draw parallel lines along the x, y and z and go ahead and draw the block. Okay? So, I am drawing a block that would encompass this feature here. What is this length? 5, 0, right? So, 60. 60 minus 10. Okay. What is 
this height 4 0 the same dimension got one face if I got one face all I need to do is draw lines parallel to the y and get this block how about the third one this length is the same as this length ok now what is what is this length here from the origin what is this length Seven zero. I'm looking at all this length from here till here. Forty and what's the radius of this? Twenty-five. So twenty-five plus forty is sixty-five. Okay. So this would be at sixty-five from here, maybe. Okay. Is it going to be difficult for you to get this block? Is it going to be difficult for you to get this block? No? Fairly straightforward? Okay? All right. Now let's try to get this slant here. This slant here. Okay? And that would happen or that would appear on this face. Okay? The corresponding slant will appear on a face parallel to this on the other side. Right? Okay. Now focus your attention on this. This line is this line here. Likewise, this line is this line here. Okay. These vertical lines are this and this. Okay. Okay, and notice that there is a slot here. Okay, so I have taken away a piece of block from this. Okay, the width of the block is 40, the height of the block is 30. <coughs> 30 and 10. Well, I, I said the block. Well, yeah. So, if if you want to call it a trapezium, yeah, trapezoid. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it's equivalent to taking a block of uh, forty by ten, forty by thirty by whatever the distance is. Okay. Anyhow, so this is the critical aspect of the drawing identify this length or this height as 30 okay go from here parallel to this identify this height okay get this point and get this point likewise go parallel to the y axis identify that vertical line get that face so this face would correspond to the face correspond to this face here at the back okay Okay, now start drawing. Now start drawing. Okay, I'm working with features on the slant surface. Okay, now I'm ready to start drawing solid lines. I'll see this. Will I see this? Will I see this? I would see this face. I will see this face here on the slant. This line. This line, this line, this line, this line. Okay. I've worked out the details on this slant here. Okay. I'll see this vertical line. I'll see this vertical line. This one. I'll see this face. I'll see this vertical line. I'll see this vertical line. Okay. How about the line here? I'll see a partial line corresponding to that. 
not a complete line. Okay, so do appreciate how judiciously I'm drawing my solid lines without spoiling my sheet. Okay, and that can happen only if I'm prepared. If I'm not prepared, I'll start making mistakes. Okay? Now, here comes the interesting part. This circular arc will be appearing as an elliptical arc on which plane? On this plane here. Yeah? On the xy plane or on a plane parallel to the xy plane. Do you remember the four center method? You do? Yes? Okay. For that, I need to draw a rhombus. Okay, that would bound the circle or bound the ellipse. Right? The length of the rhombus is going to be what? The length of each edge of the rhombus is going to be what? 50? So this length is 50. I have one length. This is 50. This is 50. This is 50. I've got a rhombus on the top face of the block. Okay? Identify the longest diagonal. Okay? From this vertex, join the midpoint of this edge. From this vertex, join the midpoint of this edge. You have two centers. You have the third center here. You have the fourth center here. Okay, with this as center, this as radius, draw an arc. With this as center, this as radius, draw another arc. Okay, so since this is a circular arc, I don't need to draw the entire ellipse. I only need to draw half of the ellipse. Okay, the rest I can join using straight lines with the main part. Here comes the trick. What do you say? What we are going to be seeing here? A parallel ellipse? Now, Okay, okay, okay. But you are a little ahead of me. Now, do you think that uh, drawing a rhombus to draw that ellipse would be a good idea? No? No? Absolutely? So, what do you do? And then you're going to be drawing only half the ellipse. You have the center for this one, which is here. Okay? And if you have to draw an arc which is parallel to this arc, what do you need to do? You need to go down by what distance? By 10. You need to go vertically down by 10. Okay? Identify the center here. The same radius from here to here. Okay? Draw the sock. Okay? If you start making a rhombus to draw the ellipse, you'll be wasting time. That's a trick that you need to keep in your mind. Likewise, from this center, go down by 10. Go down by 10. Identify the center with this as radius. OK? Draw an arc. Now, this arc is not going to be complete. This arc is going to be partial. This arc is going to be partial because there's this vertical line here. Okay? All right? And then join this guy. The rhombus that we used to make the ellipse. What do you mean? To get the ellipse here. This length is 50, this length is 50, this length is 50, this length is 50, this angle is 60, this angle is 60, this angle is 120 degrees, this angle is 120 degrees, 
you have all the conditions necessary for you to have an ellipse enclosed within a rhombus. Okay? What? Lens. You got the block, no? You have this block here. Okay. And of course, what's your question again? If the diameter of a circle is 50, okay, what would be the length of the bounding square of the square that is bounding the circle? 50, okay, length and width would be the same, same in case of rhombus. Absolutely, same in case of rhombus. Okay, because uh, what's happening is if you are rotating an object uh, about the x, about the z, and then projecting, uh, projecting your square is getting shaped into an into a rhombus so far so good so far so good okay it has to be tangent to the arc so if you draw this arc using soft pencil using construction lines your arc will probably be here it will probably go some, somewhere like this okay it will go somewhere like this and the point where the vertical line intersects with the arc that is where you need to stop I would need 10 more minutes be patient So this, this vertical line is tangent to both these arcs. Yeah. Okay. Hold on, hold on. You can do precisely the same thing for this block here. Okay? What would be the length of the rhombus for this? Huh? 60? So this I know is 60. I can, I can identify where 60 is from here. I can identify where 60 is from here. I can draw this line which is parallel to this line. I get another rhombus. Okay. I join or I identify the longest diagonal. The same method, 4 center. I get 4 centers here. First two centers, the third center, the fourth center, again I need to draw only half an ellipse, okay, where this point as center, this has radius, I draw this arc, where this point as center, this is radius, I draw another arc, okay, and to draw the same thing at the back or on the back face, I need to essentially control C, control V. Control C is for copying, Control V is for pasting. Okay, but I cannot do that here. So what I would do is this was my center for this arc. Okay, I would go 10 parallel to the X. Identify this as center with the same radius. I'll draw an arc at the back. Okay, from here I'll go 10 again parallel to X. Okay. Here I'll draw an incomplete arc and then try to figure out a line which is tangent to both the arcs. Okay. And then this vertical line is going all the way down. See this feature here. Okay. Please repeat. Are you with me? Do you think now it's going to be easy for you to draw the ellipse or rather ellipses corresponding to this void, this circle? All you need to do is locate the bounding rhombus, same method, 
four center method, get the ellipse. Am I done? There would be one more elliptical arc, and that would give the impression or the perception of the depth of the void. For that, the same trick. I go 10 down with the two centers. What do you mean? For the second arc, it's, it's a void, no? It's a cylindrical void along the z direction. Okay? I don't need a line. Okay, a few last things. Actually, I never needed this. This was only for our understanding and appreciation that I had marked the XYZ coordinates or the axes explicitly. We don't need this. We don't need this. In your actual drawing, or in reality, on your sheets, this is how the isometric, <coughs> what did I draw? Drawing, sketch, or view? View. Isometric sketch or isometric view? Because I used the true scale. I did not use the isometric scale. That is even harder. And that's one of the reasons why we, at times, Somebody asked me, right? So that's one of the reasons why we uh, prefer to use true scales at times. Okay? Thank you.